bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I bless and praise his holy name. Well, praise the Lord. This is a new day. This is a day that the Lord has made. And I am so excited because I am glad to be in the family of Almighty God. Well, I'm praising him for another day, another opportunity to come before you and share the living word of God. Well, my name is Dr. Stella, and as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to come before you to share the uncompromised living word of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as we prepare to go before the throne of grace and mercy to obtain grace and help in time of need, we know that our help comes from the Lord, praise God, who made heaven and earth. Our helper, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. So before I get into my message today, you know, the title of, of my program is Spirit, Soul, and Body Beautiful. Praise the Lord. You know, as I've shared with you on many occasions, we are a spirit. We have a soul. And we live in this physical body. We are a tripart type being. There's three parts to us. Just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, He has made us three in one. Praise the Lord. So today, we're going to be talking about the soul of man. We've shared about the Spirit. We know they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We talked about the body because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He said, know ye not that you were bought with a price, that we are not our own, but we've been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Isn't that good news? Praise the Lord. But today we're going to be talking about the soul of man, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, and our attitude. Praise the Lord. But God has given us a free will. So I'm going to be sharing with you some scriptures in the word of God regarding our soul. Hallelujah. So just in case you didn't know that you are a tree, tripartite being and that there's three parts to you, we're going to be talking about your soul, the, the soul realm, which encompasses once again our mind, our will, and our emotions and our attitude. Praise the Lord. God is so good. And his mercy endures forever. So let's go before the throne of grace. You know, I always want to present myself to the Father. And I just pray that he will speak through my mouth and think through my mind. And that he will get all the glory for what will be said and done this day. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this opportunity once again to come before your throne. You said to come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. So we come boldly to your throne today, Father, and we thank you for all that will be said and done this day. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. And I just thank you for everyone that's under the sound of my voice today, Lord God, that the word will penetrate and it will bear fruit. We thank you, Father, that it will fall on good ground. Hallelujah. So we just thank you for all that will be said and done. I pray that those that are under the sound of my voice that need healing, need deliverance, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I just decree and declare right now that you are saved. According to Romans 10, 9 and 10, he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, then you would be saved. Hallelujah. So we just decree and declare salvation. I decree healing right now in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. I thank you, Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice is walking in divine and perfect health. And if you're not, I just believe that by miracle or by medicine or by the message that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just bless you once again. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for all that will be said and done this day. We give you the praise. We give you the honor and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name. And we agree by saying amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. So let's go over to 3 John, starting at chapter 2. We're talking about the soul of man. 
And there's so many scriptures in the Bible. And I submit to you today that you will come away from this message knowing that your soul is just as important to God as your spirit and your body. So let's take a look at 3 John. Not the epistle of John, but 3 John chapter 2. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. He said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. That means divine health. Even as your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your attitude prospers. Praise the Lord. So what does it mean to prosper? Well, it means that you're doing well. You're prospering. You're doing well in every area of your life because God wants us to live a balanced life. That you're doing well spiritually. You're doing well in your soul realm, which is our mind your will, your emotions, your attitude, as well as in your physical body. He wants us to prosper materially. He wants us to prosper physically, financially, emotionally. Every area of our life, we, God wants us to prosper. So he says that he wishes above all things. What le what's left out of all? Nothing. He said all things that we may prosper, that means in every area of our life that we're doing well, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, in our spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord. And in our emotions. Praise the Lord. So Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundant. We know that in John 10.10, 10, he said, But the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have life more abundant. God is concerned about us living the abundant life. We are commanded to love life and see good days and, and to keep our tongue from evil and our lips from speaking deceit. He says, from the fruit of our lips, people are filled with good things and the work of their hands being rewards. From the fruit of our lips. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. He says that, that life and death, when we speak life to every situation in our lives, it's in the power of the tongue. And he said, we shall eat the fruit thereof. So we're eating the fruit of our words. And when we speak life, no matter what it looks like, every dead situation, if your finances, if your physical body, if you feel spiritually dead, begin to pray in the spirit and build yourself up on your most holy faith. If you're lacking in your finances, begin to seek the Lord. He said that he's the one in Deuteronomy. He said, I am the one that gives you the power to get wealth. The power, he gives us the power to get wealth. So whatever relationships, if you're having trouble in your relationships, know that God says that he loves us. He said, we are to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, and there are might. Hallelujah. So how can we say that we love God who we've never seen and we're not loving and being loving to the people that we see every single day? that we live with, family members, husbands, wives, children, grandchildren, on your job, no matter where it is that we spend the time, when we're spending time with people, we're supposed to love the people. Ha. And if they're unlovely, you can love the hell out of them because love conquers all, hallelujah. Love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting and eternal life. So God says that from the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things and the work of their hands being rewarded. You know, God says that he is a rewarder of them that's, that diligently seek him. 
He said that we're not to go grow weary in well-doing. He said in due season we would reap if we faint not. So we're not about to faint. No, we're moving on higher and higher and higher. More grace, more faith. He said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. He said that we shall mount up like the wings of an eagle, and we shall run and not be weary, and we shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. So, you know, August, we're in the month of August right now in the year of 2023. And do you know that eight is the number of new beginnings? So, this month, I'm declaring that August 2023 is a month of prosperity, that everything is coming up. Glory to God. The seventh month, or the seventh, number seven, is the number of completion. Remember, God created the heaven and the earth, and on the seventh day, he rested well. On the eighth day, new beginnings. So we're declaring new beginnings. Hallelujah. He says, believe the Lord thy God and it shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. God says that he wants us to prosper. He said above all things, he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health. He wants us to do good in every area of our life, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, every area, every area, we ought to be doing good. And if we're not, that means that we're, we're not spending enough time with the Father to get clear directions. He said that his purpose, he said many are the plans in a man's heart, but God's purpose shall prevail. So what is the purpose that God has for each and every one of our lives? Yes, he has a divine decreed purpose for each and every one of us, praise the Lord. So let's take a look at um, Psalms 103. And it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. You know, God is a holy God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. You know, God daily loads us with benefits. He's bestowing benefits upon us every single day. Hallelujah. Who forgives all of your iniquities. Who heals all of your diseases. Remember I said, what's left out of all? Nothing is left out of all. He said he heals all of your diseases. Hallelujah who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your mouth, so that your youth, hallelujah, is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So if you're going through a period of depression, oppression, obsession, whatever it is. He said he came to set the captives free. He said, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So there is liberty in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. He said he came to set the captives free. He said that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he said in the last days, he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh his sons and daughters would prophesy, his old men would dream dreams, and his young men would see visions. Hallelujah. So he has already poured out his spirit upon all flesh. Glory to God. So therefore, if he has poured out his spirit upon all flesh, he said, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So if you're experiencing any oppression, depression today, just know that he came to set the captives free. So I take authority over that spirit right now, and I decree and declare that that burden is being lifted. He said that he came to lift the heavy burdens. So that burden is being lifted off of you right now in the name of Jesus. So let's go to Romans 12, 
starting at verse number one. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. These bodies belong to Jesus. They don't belong to us. We were bought with a price, and that price was with the blood of Jesus. So we are to present our bodies, these bodies, this house that carries us around from birth to death until we go back to the dust, but our soul and spirit will go and live with him forevermore, our soul and our spirit. Hallelujah. So he said we are to present these bodies a living sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And then he said, do not be conformed to the world, the world's way of doing things, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will that God has for each and every one of his blood-bought children. Praise the Lord. He said he doesn't want us to be conformed to the world's way of doing things because the world is waxing worse and worse. But he says that, you know, our bodies, even though our bodies are decaying, but our spirits are getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger when we go into the presence of the Lord and spend time with him. Hallelujah. He said that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he says that I beg of you by the mercies of God that we present these bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, holy. He said, be ye holy as I am holy. He says, a living sacrifice. And he said, don't be conformed to the world's way because we are of another kingdom. We belong to the kingdom of almighty God. We've been translated out of darkness into his marvelous light. So praise God. We have the light of Jesus living on the on the inside of us. And he said, let your light so shine before him, before men, that they would see your good works. But we are to give all the glory and honor to the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're not to hide our light under a bushel. We're supposed to put these lights on a lampstand for all the world to see because we are the light and we are the salt of the world. Hallelujah. So how will men be saved unless we are doing our part? We are the light. Hallelujah. And light dispels darkness. So if there's any darkness around when you show up, that light is going to dispel all the darkness and hallelujah, God is going to get the glory out of every situation and circumstance. So on your job, in the marketplace, no matter where you are, glory to God, that light is shining on the inside of you. And you know what? The more time we spend with him, do you know that that light is getting brighter and brighter and brighter? And it's expanding and it's growing. And that way, you know, when that light is, is shining bright, and we walk into a room, do you know that those demons are going to flee? Because they cannot stand to be in the presence of Almighty God. So praise the Lord. That is our assignment as men and women of God. And he says that by the renewing of our mind, do not be conformed to the world, but we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Remember I said that this, in the soul realm encompasses our mind, our will, and our emotions and our attitude. So we don't want to be conformed to the world's way of thinking, the world's way of doing things, the world's way of acting out whatever it is that they believe in. No, we believe in the one and only true and living God. And that who is, that's who we serve. And that is Jesus is Lord. Not only is he Savior, but he is Lord of all. Hallelujah. So once we confess Jesus and we know that he is our Lord and our soon coming king, that is how we're supposed to live as disciples, as his handmaidens, as his ambassadors in the earth realm, as his voice, as his feet, as his hands. So praise God, that is the assignment. You know, he said that he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men, the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying and the of the body of Christ until we all come to the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. Yes, we are one with him. 
We've been made one. We've been reconciled back to him. Hallelujah. And reconciliation, that means we are one with our father. Praise the Lord. So he said that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will that God has for us. He has a perfect divine cre decreed will for each and every one of our lives. Yes, he does. He knows the plans that he has for us. They're higher than our plans. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards us. They're higher than our thoughts. And he's given us a mind to think with, to use our brain. So every day you should be praying over this mind. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, that we have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. That means that we are to think like him because he's already put his mind on the inside of us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, the mind of Christ. He said, when, he said in all you're getting, get understanding. So we should have understanding. We should be getting more and more wisdom, revelation. He said, if anyone ask, lacks wisdom, to ask of him, and he would give it to us liberally. We got to ask for wisdom. Like Solomon, he, had, he was the wisest man because he asked for wisdom. Well, he told us to do the same thing. So if there's an area of our lives that we don't know which way to go, we don't know what to say, how to be, what to do, he said, ask. He said, seek and we shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be open. That's an open invitation that God has given us to come boldly before the throne of grace. We don't have to be ashamed. We're not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. We are believers. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt or harm them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. And he said, if there's any sick among you, call for the elders of the church, that they will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise the Lord. God has given us commandments, and he's given us promises. He said, all of his promises are yes and amen. Every promise that God has ever made us, you know, he says that it's already done. The work is already finished. Now he's already worked it out. All we got to do is walk it out. Hallelujah. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name said he restores my soul my soul my mind because you know oftentimes you can go through a period of depression or you can feel like you know you've been hurt you've been abused you've been taken advantage of and it does affect your mind but you know what we gotta get into that word and build ourselves up on the word of god he said if you abide in me and my word abides in you you could ask what you will and it shall be given. He says, he is the potter and we're the clay. He said, he's molding us, making us, shaping us into the vessels that he would have, that he would have us to be. So he's told us everything that we need to do to stay in right relationship with him. He said, we've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. We're in right standing with him. He's not condemning us. He loves us. He condemns the world. But you know what? He chastises us. He chastens those whom he loves. And he convicts us. He lets us know when we're going off track. Praise God that he lets us know because if it wasn't for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, you know, we could be way over on here on the right and he's telling us to go left. So we need to hear. He said that we are to hear, listen, and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us this day. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us, that he's with us even unto the ends of all ages. So he's with us. He's listening. He's speaking. And you know, sometimes we just need to just be quiet, be still. He said, listen. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen. 
He said, attune our spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto us. He said, open the eyes of our understanding. He said, eye has not seen, neither ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. So he says, you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your attitude, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we love the Lord with all of our heart. If there's anything in your heart or on your heart or any person or anything that is on your heart taking the place of Jesus and his shed blood and his relationship and his saving power, then that is considered an idol. We're not to idolize anything or anyone. If you're going to idolize somebody, idolize our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So that is pride. And he said a haughty spirit comes before a fall. So if you have pride, thinking like Lucifer, that you are your own God or that someone else or something else, you've made a God, and maybe another person, a relationship, could be your job, could be your money, because he said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. He didn't say money was evil. He said the love of money is the root of all evil. And all we have to do is watch the news every single day to see and hear about all the corruption that's going on in the world because of the love of money. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So let's take a look at uh, Matthew 16. It says, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with the angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Well, thank God for the rewards. But you know, we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to get our rewards because he said the blessings of the Lord make us rich and he adds no sorrow. And he said he wish above all things that we may prosper on this side, not when we get to heaven. We know that we have rewards coming, but he wants us to live the overcoming victorious life in Christ while we are here because he wants to get the glory out of our lives. So he said, I wish above all things that you may prosper spirit, soul, body, materially, spiritually, physically, financially, and emotionally in every area of our lives. Hallelujah. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, what are you, you know, what are you giving up? What are you giving up in place of your soul prospering? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with the angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. Praise God. What work are you doing here for the kingdom of God? Are you pushing back the darkness? Are you praying, interceding, standing in the gap? pulling down the stronghold of the devil. He said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold, casting down vain imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought, every thought captive. Remember this mind and our will. He's given us a free will, but this mind is a terrible thing to lose. Not only is it a terrible thing to lose, it's a terrible thing to waste it on the things of the world. Yes, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are of another kingdom. Yes, it is important to know what's taking place because he said that we should know the sign of the times, just like the children of Issachar, so that we know how to pray and what to take authority over and how the enemy is encroaching upon this world. This world system, the economical system, the educational system, the political system, 
all these systems that the enemy is controlling. But the Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell within. Hallelujah. So we are in the world, but we're not of the world. This world belongs to the Lord. Yes, everything in it. Hallelujah. He created it and he knows the end from the beginning. But we know what happened when Satan tempted Eve and she fell for it. That's when sin entered into the world. But you know, when Jesus came, hallelujah, and he took all manner of sin, sickness, disease upon his back with those 39 stripes, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. He was chastised. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was chastised so we could have peace. Hallelujah. And he said, by Jesus' stripes, we were healed. That means we are healed. It's part of the salvation package. But we got to do our part. We got to know what the word says and begin to decree and declare what the word says. Yes, there are natural things that we are supposed to do because we live in this physical body. So we know the things that we're supposed to do, drink our water, take our medicine, exercise, and do all the things that naturally that we can do. But God is a supernatural God. So you can do all those things and still the enemy, if there's a door open, he's going to try to come in. But the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment shall be condemned. This is the heritage of the servants of the Most High God. Hallelujah. And we are his inheritance in the earth realm. So let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse number 12. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the soul from the spirit. Remember I says we are a spirit. We have a soul but we live in this physical body and the joints from the marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You know, man looks on the outside, but God sees our heart. He knows what's in our heart. And he said the heart could be deceitfully wicked. Who can know it but God? So we just pray that the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit and that we walk in the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians, he said that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, faith, patience. Against such there is no law. That is our recreated spirit, the love of God, the joy of the Lord, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the goodness of God, his mercies that are new every morning. Praise the Lord. So as we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the flesh is what this body longs for because it is the flesh and the spirit that are warring against one another. But thank God for the soul of man because that is the deciding factor between the soul and the spirit because God has given us a free will. He's given us a mind to think and to reason and to make right choices. He said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus, we have the mind of Christ. So you might say, well, how do I keep my mind stayed on Jesus? Well, we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And it's not easy because the world is pulling on us. It's pulling on our flesh. It's pulling on our spirit constantly with all the things that are going on around us. But he said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you could ask what you will and it shall be done. He said, if we meditate on the word day and night and observe to do all that is written there. And he said, then we would make our way prosperous and then we would have good success. Hallelujah. But we got to do our part. We got to meditate on the word day and night and observe to do all. What's left out of all? Nothing. He said, all that is written there. And he said, then we, not him. He said, we would make our way prosperous and then we would have good success. It's just like he said that 
He wishes above all things that we may prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And he also said, he is the Lord thy God, and he's the one that gives us the power. He empowers us to get wealth. Hallelujah. He gives us the power. So in 1 Peter 1 and 13, he says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who calls you is holy. Hallelujah, we serve a holy God. And also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. We serve a holy God. And you know what? He's made us holy, we're sanctified, we're set apart, we've been justified freely by His grace. His grace is sufficient. Thank you, Father, for justification, for sanctification, for reconciliation. We've been reconciled back to Him. We are one with Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. So we have the great God Almighty that loves us, and wants the very, very best for us. But the fruit of the Spirit, as I share with you, is love, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. Joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The peace of God, thank God for the Prince of Peace, Jehovah Shalom, hallelujah. He is our Prince of Peace. Long-suffering, yes, he said that we will have tests, trials, and tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer because he's already overcome the world. Kindness. We are to be kind to one another. Love one another. Be kind. Be gracious. Be generous. Goodness. Ah, the goodness of God. Praise the Lord. Well, he's placed that same goodness on the inside of us. And we are to be good, to be kind, to be loving. That is the fruit of our recreated spirit. And faithfulness, faithfulness. Are we faithful? Praise God. He said that we walk by faith and not by sight. He said without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He said we walk by faith and not by sight. What is faith? Faith is acting on what you believe. If you believe the word of God, then you're going to act on the word of God. Faith. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. He says that we are to be faithful because he's placed that faith on the inside of us. So we have the power to be faithful. Hallelujah. He says that we are to have gentleness, gentle, kindness. You know, a soft answer turns away wrath. And he said that where there's envy and strife, there's every evil work. So there should be no envy, no jealousy, no strife. Just the goodness of God, the peace of God. And self-control. We have the power to control ourselves. Yes, we do. And if you don't think that you have the power, we can call on the name of Jesus because that name is above every name. He said, at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, he is King of Kings and he is Lord of Lords. He said, we can have and we do have self-control. Put a watch over this mouth that we only speak and decree and declare those things that are pure and lovely and of a good report. Put a watch over our ears Hallelujah, that we only hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. He said that he would open the eyes of our understanding. He said, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God will do for those that trust him, love him, and are obedient to him. He says that he rewards us for diligently seeking him. He said there's no good thing that he will withhold from those who walk upright before him. Praise the Lord. So as we walk upright before the Lord, there's nothing that he will withhold from us. No good thing. Because he loves us. 
and he wants the very, very, very best for us. Hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. So therefore, we are to gird up the loins of our mind. Be sober. Be sober and be vigilant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God is good and his mercy endures forever. We praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, they set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Ammon Moab, and Mount Siri who had come against Judah and they were defeated. So praise is a weapon. Praise. Judah praise. Remember, Judah means praise. So every time we lift up the name of Jesus, every time we praise the Lord, he said, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Let's bless and praise his holy name. Hallelujah. His holy name. We serve a holy God. So remember that when we decree a thing, it shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Believe the word of God. God wants his sons and daughters to prosper. But our soul, our mind, our mind, this mind between these two ears right here, God has given us a mind to use and to make right decisions, make right choices. Hallelujah. Our will. God has given us a free will. You know, we are to will to do the will of God. He's left his will here for us. He, he says that we have a better covenant based on better promises, and all his promises are yes and amen. Our mind, our will, our emotions. Yes, God has given us emotions. But you know what? Our emotions should not control us. We are to have self-control. He said, be ye angry, but sin not. So he knows that we're going to get angry just like he did when he turned over all the money changers, those tables in the temple. He was angry. So he knows that we have the same capacity to become angry. He said, don't let the sin, don't let the sun go down on our wrath. Praise the Lord. So he knows He's given us emotions, but our emotions should not control us. We should have self-control. Hallelujah. Because if you're out of control, then your emotions are controlling you. And attitude. We are supposed to have a great attitude, a positive attitude at all times. And if you don't, go back and spend some time with the Lord and be grateful. Begin to glorify him and think of the goodness of God and all the great things that he is doing for us. He said he daily loads us with benefits. Hallelujah. And those benefits are accruing to our account every single day. Praise the Lord. Well, I just trust that there was something that I shared with you today. Remember, you are a spirit. You have this soul, but we live in this physical body. There's three parts to us. The soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, and that great attitude that you have every single day. Well, praise the Lord. God is good. I'm Dr. Stella. I trust that the word was penetrated into your heart today and that we're growing from faith to faith and glory to glory. If you want to hear more of my messages, go to YouTube, Dr. Stella Spicer Ministries, and that's where you'll find more of my teaching. If this message has been a blessing to you and you want to share and you want to give into this ministry, go to my website, www.christcia.org, and make your donation, praise the Lord. Or you can go to my cash app, which is dollar sign Stella by Starlight, S-T-A-R-L-I-T-E, praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you, and I'll be back again to share the true and living word of God with you again soon. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I love you.